Hi, welcome to FET Interactive Simulations. My name is Sarah English and I am from Sweet Home High School in Amherst, New York. And I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about my experience with these simulations. So a little bit about my background to basically put in context how I use FET simulations in my classroom. I teach at Sweet Home High School, which is right outside of the city of Buffalo in New York State. I have just finished my 21st year of teaching. I teach Regents Chemistry, which is basically the equivalent of general chemistry in the rest of the United States. And I also teach Advanced Placement Chemistry, which I've taught for the last 12 years. We are a Title I school district, which means that all of our students across the district receive uh, both breakfast and lunch, no matter what their financial status may be. Our district averages around 1,000 students in the high school from year to year. Important thing to know about my district in terms of our technology profile, we are a one-to-one -one iPad school from fifth to 12th grade, so every student is issued an iPad. They are able to take these iPads home with them every single day to do their work. If our students are having access to issues at home, our district has done an absolutely incredible job at making sure that they have Wi-Fi capabilities even before this whole pandemic ever happened. We do utilize the learning management system of Schoology, which I absolutely adore. I won't even go into how much I love Schoology. Also, our school has been integrated into this digital environment since 2011. So what is FET? FET was originally called the Physics Educational Technology, and now it is just so much more than just physics apps. Uh, it was created in 2002 by Nobel laureate Carl Wyman and is based at the University of Colorado at Boulder. It has over 100 interactive simulations, probably even more than that, and it includes physics, chemistry, earth science, biology, and math. There is a slew of teacher resources available, which I will go into in more detail. One of the coolest developments I think that FET has done is they now have simulations with accessible features, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit. And finally, and most importantly, it's free, which, you know, is incredible. So how do we use FET in the classroom? I primarily use FET simulations as laboratory activities, especially if I'm trying to teach a concept that's a little bit more difficult or harder to pull off in class. I use the simulations to animate a concept in class that might not be easily seen. I do embed video clips, uh, take images of FET simulations, and put them into my flipped classroom lectures that I have on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Uh, sometimes I use them to expand the understanding of a phenomenon in a storyline. So if we're looking at a phenomenon and I can use FET simulations to build students' understanding to better understand that phenomenon. They can be step by step in terms of how they go through the simulation or they can be very open-ended experiences. Let's talk about compatibility issues because as one knows, that can make or break the ease of using technology in a classroom. So starting with simulations on a desktop or a laptop, I think one of the best things about FET is their dedication to moving as many of their simulations as possible over to the HTML5 format. Some of the sims are going to require Java or Flash, but I just checked and there's only two chemistry simulations that require flash. That's the density sim and the Stern-Gerlach experiment. Not too bad out of the 53 simulations that currently exist. When you think about compatibility and running these simulations on a tablet, the new HTML5 simulation can run on most tablets. And I'm going to say most because my experience only comes from using iPads and Chromebooks, so I'm not sure about other digital platforms. The app is only a dollar each and is transferable. So what does that mean? That means that my high school bought 200 site licenses to use on our iPads. When those students are done with their high school career and they turn in their iPad, that means that that FET simulation can be moved to another student's iPad 
and keep on working. So it doesn't mean that once the app has been removed, it's gone forever. It's transferable, which means that over time, my school will build up their collection of FET apps and until all of our students have one, which I just absolutely love. If you get the app for your tablet, it operates without a Wi-Fi connection. That's huge, huge, because I don't know about your school district, but every once in a while, we will have Wi-Fi issues, whether it is due to weather or just, I don't know, some type of cyber attack. Who knows what's going to happen at our districts? But when that does happen, it's not going to affect me if I'm working with the FET app because they're all there. We can use them right away. And that's a pretty big thing when you're trying to keep your class moving forward and the Wi-Fi's out. So let's look at how you use the FET website on a laptop. So we're going to start out by going up to that little person icon and signing in. There I am, I'm signing in. And then I'm going to hit play with a sim. And then I'm going to scroll down um, until I get to chemistry. And then I'm going to scroll down until I get to the sugar and salt solution sim. That's what I'm looking for all the way at the bottom. And when I get there, I'm going to click on it. And the first thing that I want to look at is for teachers. Now, if you create an account, you can have access to all this, but you do need to make an account. So, oh look, there's my resource, Intro to Solutions. So you will notice that there's a title and a description and that there is a PDF and a doc available because that's what I uploaded into the site. And then it gives you a whole bunch of information about what you can find that's involved with this particular resource. Then I'm going to go back and we see the incredible amount of resources available. And now we know that this is Java and I did this on purpose. So I'm going to hit download and then I'm going to go down to my downloads folder and I'm going to click on this and I get this message which basically says, oh no, you can't open it because we can't identify you. So I do have a fix for this. You're going to go into downloads. You are going to drag that, in my case to my desktop. And on a Mac, you're going to select Control and then tap on the thumbnail. And that allows you to open it. And then it says, do you really want to trust this? Of course I want to trust this. It's FET. So I'm going to select Open. And then we get the Java Tracker coming up. And it takes a little bit of time, and that's OK. But before you know it, hey, it's working. So I'm going to expand it. And now I'm in one of my favorite sims, that's Java, but I can still use it. So I'm adding some salt, and then I'm going to put my conductivity tester in, and I'm adding more, and oh, look at those rays coming out of my light bulb. And now I'm going to add some sugar, and nothing happens to the intensity. And I remove the salt, and oh no, no more rays, add water, remove water, evaporate water. And I love this. And now I'm going to go look at the micro view. And at the micro view, I'm going to add sodium chloride. And now I can see it, like I said before, making the invisible now visible to my students. And I can add some sucrose. Oh, no covalent bonds are broken during this. Nope, none harmed during this simulation. And then I can flip over to the water. And I can see what the sodium chloride looks like when I put it in water. Even better, I can put on partial charges and see how those uh, salt ions align with the water molecules. Maybe I'll click on sugar in 3D and look at my space field versus my ball and stick model. And then I'll click out of this and then I'm going to reset it all. And I'm going to add the sucrose molecule in and I can see how well that separates out. And again, see water and the partial charges around that. So that's a little overview about how the salt and sugar simulation looks and one way of loading a Java simulation. Remember, you can get this common error message if you're not sure how to use it, which can be really super annoying. So again, you might get this dialog box that appears that says, oh no, it can't be opened because it's from an unidentified developer. And we definitely see this in the Mac universe. 
going through it one more time. You download the file, you bring it out onto your desktop, you control click it or right click on the icon, select open, the thing runs, and it's awesome. Now they do have a better fix for this now instead of going through this whole production that I've done. And that is to see if your simulation is this Cheer PJ compatible. So let's take a look at that. So let's talk about how to use a sim with Cheer PJ and it's, it's for you. So I'm clicking on that Java icon and I can see, you know, is it compatible? So now I'm going to go over and I'm going to click on browser compatible and go to chemistry, scroll down until I find sugar and salt solutions. So same app as before, and it's going to load up a little slowly, but that's okay. We're going to make it, gonna wait, gonna be patient, gonna happen. Here we go. Now we see, same thing as before the, the this Java checker loading up and hey, we've got it again. So a couple of less steps that we can do. And this I would have done on, I would have gone through this process on my, uh, my MacBook Air. So we can see that in terms of how quickly it's going and type of quality that we have, it's pretty much the same. So if I was using this as a demo in my class, it would be absolutely fine. I wouldn't worry about speed issues or anything else. It's very, very similar to the other process that I went through to bring, to make this simulation happen. Okay, now what you're seeing is me mirroring it from my iPad. Little bit different experience here. So I'm going into simulations and, uh, and this is through the app. And again, I have scrolled down to find different app. I'm going to try reaction rates this time, and we can see that Java symbol. So again, I'm going to go and see if it's browser compatible. And I just made a mistake. This is not on my, this is not through the app. This is on uh, going through Safari on my iPad. So reactions and reactions rates and we're loading it up. And now I've sped it up a little bit here. This is not how fast it went. It actually went a lot slower, but for the sake of time, I sped it up using Camtasia. Now here's the thing I want you to notice. I'm using my finger to try to move this up and down. So again, this is on my iPad. This is through Safari, going through Safari to get to the FET website using cheer pj to make this happen and the, what i want you to notice is that it's a little slow so i think you need to test this out on your own if you're an ipad user i'm not sure how it works on chromebooks if it's a little bit faster but i'd have to think pretty deeply about going through this avenue with my students and thinking about how annoyed they would be or how patient they would be and who knows, this might speed up a lot, or they could just be working on transforming this simulation over to an HTML5, and this is just a stopgap, which I totally get. So that is what a Java sim on an iPad looks like. Important points to remember about the FET simulation so far. It is absolutely worth it to create a free account to access content, because when you're thinking about I want to develop something for my students, I'm not going to start it from scratch. No, I'm going to the teacher resources and I'm going to see what other teachers have done because most teachers, when they submit their resources, have submitted them as Word documents. And if they submit them as Word documents, that's basically an open invitation to say, hey, why don't you come in and maybe you like what I've done, but maybe you need to tweak a couple of things. So make the free account, go to the teacher resources. Under teaching on at the website, explore tips for using FET. That will give you a grand overview, lots of videos, lots of important points to consider that's not even remotely touched in this particular presentation. So I really encourage you to go and check that out. Be aware of the accessibility functions that are now available. 
this is an incredible development by FET to not just reach some users, but all users. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a second. And finally, don't overlook the large number of language translations for ELL students. It's definitely something worth checking out. So let's go on and look at one of my favorite chemistry simulations in FET that also has a ton of accessible features associated with it. Okay, so I am mirroring my iPad again and using the FET app. And when I go in, I'm going to select chemistry and then I'm going to scroll down to the molarity simulation. It's going to load up. And what I want you to notice about this is the sound and music that accompanies the adding and removal of solvent and solute. So we'll switch to something else. The other aspect is that is fantastic is the sound that occurs when the solution has reached saturation. How the sound increases in frequency as more solute precipitates out. And this was added to assist students with visual impairments. Now I've switched over to my desktop of this particular simulation to show you the keyboard navigation. So I'm going to go to the keyboard and this is the keyboard shortcuts. So you can check this out. I'm only going to go over one of them. So if you click on a slider, it highlights it, and then you select tab. And when you hit tab, you can now use the arrow keys on a keyboard to go up and down to add amounts of solute and amounts of solvent. So I think this is a really incredible aspect of what FET is doing and how they've added in these accessibility features. FETs I've used in class. This is a overview of all the FET simulations that I have used in my classes. So obviously the AP means I've used it in AP chemistry. The GC means that I've used it in general chemistry. My personal favorites, I don't know, they're all personal favorites, but I'm a big fan of Build and Atom. I think a lot of people have used that. Recent addition is the Energy Forms and Changes. I now use that in my Thermochemistry storyline, really love that one. The gas properties in intro, I've used both of those. Uh, there's great improvements on both of those. The models of the hydrogen atom, I use that in my general chemistry course and as a demo only. And I don't know, uh, pretty much, I, I, I love these simulations and I have resources for all of these and I do plan on sharing all of my resources after this presentation. So thank you so much for coming to my presentation. I really appreciate you coming today and I hope you have some questions that we can discuss or comments about using FET simulations. And I look forward to hearing from all of you. Thanks and hope you enjoyed the show.